My brother, 40, and his ex-wife, 40, got divorced out of the blue. According to his ex-wife, she was always clear that she didn't want kids. I don't know the truth because my brother avoids this question. Anyway, we were still all shocked when they got divorced because these two loved each other and were inseparable. Very soon after, my brother introduced his girlfriend to us, his very pregnant girlfriend. Math ain't mathin'. Mom confronted my brother, but he said it just happened. So we contacted the ex-wife, and after some prodding, she confessed that he'd been saying that he wanted children and was having anxiety because they didn't have much time left. This was three, three and a half years ago. He cheated on her, and she found out about it and asked for a divorce. Anyway, one day after the divorce was finalized, he married his affair partner, 29. Now they have two children. My brother changed a lot, and he wasn't himself anymore always brooding and looking miserable. Of course, with two children, you have other priorities. Still, he became very asocial and didn't do anything outside of work. According to his new wife, he was not like this when she first met him. He was happy and laid back, but now they fought a lot. Or mostly, she would cry, yell at him, and try to get a reaction out of him, but he wouldn't give her anything back. Then one day, he moved out and filed for divorce and shared custody. Two months ago, he told us he was getting a divorce. Now he spends his weeks without the children and with his first wife at her apartment. I think they've reconciled, or at least they're messing around. I don't have that much contact with him anymore because I'm disgusted. But he's his old self, happy and open and full of life. His current wife, pending divorce, sometimes spends time with the children at my mother's house, which is great, but she would not stop talking about the ex-wife. This morning I was there, and as usual, she started talking about driving by the ex-wife and seeing my brother's car. She was angry, and I got that, but I was starting to feel sick. I mean, my brother is a total idiot, but honestly, for me, his current wife is a close second on the idiot scale. I was thinking this to myself absently until I was brought back to the conversation when she was yelling that she felt used to produce children so his ex didn't have to. I got agitated because, while I don't understand why his ex is seeing him again, she did not use his current wife. So I very sternly and loudly said, well, maybe next time, don't sleep with married men. She was shocked and then started yelling at me. I told her that she could not possibly have seen that he always loved his ex-wife and to stop lying to herself. She started crying. When she left, my mom started crying too, then I started crying because I thought I was the idiot too. The problem is that none of what I said wasn't the truth of what happened. I called my brother to yell at him and told him he should have thought about his children instead of breaking up his home. He hangs up. Am I the idiot? So your brother left wife one because he wanted kids but she did not. So they got divorced. Brother introduces pregnant girlfriend and it turns out he's been having an affair with her for a few years, which is why they got divorced. So he has the kids he wants and realizes it's not all fun and rainbows and hates his life. Boo darn who. He wanted the kids. He spawned too. Sorry the responsibility is too much. So he goes back to wife one, who should have told him to return to his current wife and spends time with her. I can see how wife two feels used. He wanted children and she was willing to have kids. She had them and then he left her. And yeah... Women really should think before messing around with married men because when a woman marries the guy who cheated on her, she's creating a job opening. She may need this dose of reality. A castle built on another woman's tears won't hold. She was told some hard truths. She had an affair with a married man and then married him a day after the divorce was finalized. Wow, girl, I find this extremely entertaining for me, but not for you. I'm sorry. You're not the idiot. I worry a lot about the children, though. I hope they have a healthy role model to look up to because this is a horrible environment in which to learn about relationships. Ex-wife number one is making him go to her for booty calls. I don't doubt that she has no rush on doing more than that, looking at how he's divorcing, but they're still in the weekend hookup stage. Yeah, poor kids. Everyone else seems mad about having to lie in the beds they make. Ex-wife number one is setting herself up for disaster too. Or maybe she'll eventually find someone better and then LP's brother will cry over losing the love of his life.
My parents are leaving town for a few days, four next month. They don't want me, a teen male, home alone for four days, so they decided to ask their kids. Moms are 28, 26, and 24. Dads are 24 and 23. If any of them would want to come stay for a few days, or if they'd let me stay with one of them. Answers were slowly coming in, and I wasn't surprised when I heard my parents say that none seemed willing. I am not close to any of my half-siblings. I'd say I don't have any relationship with them. I don't ever really see them. They never talk to me. We're not social media friends. We don't text, and they don't send a card or anything for my birthday. I maybe see them at Christmas, but it's not like they spend time with me. I never felt like I had siblings. It always felt like I lived with two sibling sets, and then I was an only child. I say half siblings because I'm trying to be respectful to my parents, who love their kids, but also not to make it seem like we're all super close and just siblings. I have different parents from each of them, and it matters a lot to them. They always saw me as the kid their living parent had after they lost their other parent. My parents weren't getting anywhere, so I asked my best friend's parents if they'd mind me staying for four days. They didn't. I told them my parents didn't know yet, but I didn't think the people they asked would agree. They know the deal by now. So I told my parents and they were annoyed that I asked my friends instead of waiting for my half-siblings. I told them it was a good idea to have a backup plan in place for when they all say no. My parents said, I don't know that they'll say no. A few days went by and still no answer from two of them. And my parents asked why I appeared to want them to say no. I said it wasn't that, I just expected it. They told me it was difficult enough to know I wanted a sibling, something I didn't know they heard me say, and it was a couple of years ago and said to my friend, when I have five of them, but to know I have such low expectations. I said it's my reality, which they can ignore if they want to, but I don't feel like a sibling to them, and I know they don't consider me a real sibling, not any of them. My parents told me I still went behind their back, and it was wrong, and showed such a lack of trust and faith. Am I the idiot? You're not the idiot. If any of your half-siblings were willing, they would have answered immediately. They were just delaying responding no, perhaps in hope that another sibling would step up and say yes. Even setting that aside, you're certainly old enough to decide where you want to stay while they're gone. They should have asked you that before even reaching out to your half-siblings. Info. Why can't a teen stay alone for four days? Is there no one nearby you could call in case of an emergency? Or are you a demon of chaos from the pit of the bad place who will likely destroy the city if unsupervised? Why do they need you to stay with a sibling? A friend seems to be the first reasonable choice at your age. I'd never leave my teen alone for that long. No parents I know would do that. He's not a demon of chaos from the pit of the bad place, but he is a teen boy with an underdeveloped brain with like-aged brained friends who might do stupid crap if left alone for four days and nights. And barring that, it's scary to be home alone at night for an extended period. And that's not weird or weak. It would be irresponsible as a parent to put a kid in that situation. Yesterday was my daughter's eighth birthday, and we had a princess-themed party. Only family and family friends were invited. My relationship with my neighbors is meh. We wave if we see them, but otherwise we don't really talk to each other. During my daughter's birthday party, held in our semi-fenced yard, I started to bring out the cupcakes for the kids. When handing them out, I noticed that two kids were definitely not invited because they weren't my nieces and nephews or family friends. I then realized they were my neighbor's kids. I paused handing out cupcakes to ask why they were here, and one of the kids just shrugged and said, My mommy said I could go. I told them it was inappropriate to just come here. My husband escorted them back to their parents' house. All their neighbors' houses are decently spaced, so it's not necessarily dangerous, but we felt better if someone walked the kids. Later on, after we had done the whole cake cutting, our neighbors approached again. This time, it was both the parents and the kids. I asked what they were doing, and they looked confused, saying they were joining the party. I was a little agitated now, and sternly said that they were not invited, that this was a birthday party for my daughter and that my family and friends were invited. It was awkward as they left and the kids kept whining as they did. The next day, I got a handwritten letter in my mailbox 
about how I treated the neighbors rudely and how I was expected to share community events. Was I too rude or harsh? So your entitled neighbors regard a private party as a community event? Fortunately, you're not obligated to share their delusions. Not the idiot, but you should probably put up security cameras and a note in their mailbox explaining the difference between community events and private parties would be entirely appropriate. Did they bring a gift? So they came uninvited and without a gift. Guests bring gifts to a child's party. As for that letter in your mailbox, screw it. You don't owe your neighbors anything. They're the ones who overstep their bounds, not you. So please don't waste any more energy worrying about it. Next year, focus on enjoying your daughter's special day with the people who were invited. As a little kid, I showed up at so many barbecues. I would smell yummy food and just go in the yard. My mom found out later and was mortified. The families usually fed me. My mom figured it out because I was never hungry on nice sunny weekends. She had a huge barbecue to thank everyone for feeding her little gate crasher, LOL. She finally got through to me that I was rude. I would never send my kids over to a private event. If they feel awkward or embarrassed, they have no one to blame but themselves. My girlfriend and I split the cost of grocery shopping 50-50, since pretty much everything we buy is for both of us anyway. Neither of us really eats breakfast, but recently, I unexpectedly lost a lot of weight, so I've started eating breakfast. Since the food I bought was just for me, I paid for it myself and got it separately from the grocery shop. I bought myself a range of things so it would last, and I wouldn't have the same things each day, so it would last me a while. Once my girlfriend noticed what I bought, the next day she started using it to make herself breakfast. I asked if she wouldn't use much since I bought it for myself, since I need to gain weight, and it was quite expensive. She said she wouldn't use it much, but then the next day, she did the same thing. I mentioned to her that since she's now eating breakfast, we'll add the food to the grocery shop then. She said no, since she's only really having it because we've got things in. She doesn't really need to have it. I pointed out that if she's going to continually use the food I bought for myself, then the least she could do is contribute towards it. She said she doesn't want to pay for the things she doesn't need. But I pointed out she's more than happy to keep using it once someone else is paid. I just said if she doesn't want to pay towards it, then I don't want her having any more of it, since I'm having to buy it more regularly if she's going to keep eating it. She said I was selfish and unfair, but I just pointed out that she expects food for free. I said I was happy to share it as long as she'd started paying towards it, but she just accused me of making it all about money. I just repeated that if she's not paying for any of the food, then I don't want her to have any of it. Am I the idiot for telling my girlfriend not to eat the food I bought for myself? Seems kind of crappy to say, I don't need it, but I'll eat it since it's already paid for, but I don't want to pay for it. Get rid of her or get a lockbox. Or when you go grocery shopping, just toss whatever you're buying separately into the communal cart. Not the idiot. Your girlfriend has a weird relationship with either money, responsibility, fairness, or all of the above. Are you sure you're not just roommates? Everyone's the idiot here. You need to have a big conversation about communication, boundaries, sharing, and cooperating in a relationship. She's the bigger idiot for taking your food and not replacing it. Still, you're also being a bit stingy about sharing food with your girlfriend. If money's that tight, there must be a better conversation. Or the two of you need to break up and find better partners. You don't seem suited for each other. One of my 39 male hobbies is entering raffles, sweepstakes, radio contests, etc. I've won tickets to concerts, sporting events, some household items, gift cards, but never a grand prize like a car or vacation. That is, until last month, when I won a free trip for four people to Florida for five nights. Obviously, I was super excited and told my wife, 38, about it right away. After our initial excitement wore off when we started talking about details, it became apparent we had conflicting ideas about this trip. Before I could even make suggestions about what I wanted this trip to be, my wife mentioned how excited our tween daughter would be and how we could go to Disney, SeaWorld, etc. She then said that we could bring her mom with us to help watch her daughter 
so that we could have some time for ourselves. She was so excited about it and was getting wrapped up in planning things without hearing what I wanted. I told her, that all sounds like fun, but I thought we could invite another couple and have it be an adult-only trip instead of bringing my stepdaughter and mother-in-law with us. She did not like my idea and told me she wouldn't feel right taking a free trip like that and leaving her daughter behind. She also said that her mom has never been to Florida, which would be the perfect opportunity for her to go there. We argued a bit before deciding to take a break and return to it before telling anybody about it. Well, that lasted about 24 hours before my wife let it slip to her daughter that I'd won a trip. Of course, my stepdaughter immediately got excited about it and started looking into all the things she wanted to do. I asked my wife why she told her daughter, and she said it was an accident, which, come on, started a fight between us. Our emotions got a little high. I told her she was wrong to bring her daughter into this after we agreed to wait and that I never agreed to take my stepdaughter or mother-in-law on this trip. I told her that I was the one who won the trip, and she was acting like this was something specifically for her. She told me I was being selfish, and that we should include those closest to us in something like this, especially since neither her stepdaughter nor my mother-in-law has ever been to Florida. She said that bringing another couple and leaving her daughter home would be cruel, especially now that she's so excited about it. I told her that her daughter was only excited because she decided to blab to her about it instead of waiting as we agreed. I told her if she wanted to bring her daughter and mother-in-law, she could also pick someone else to go with because I'd rather stay home by myself than go on a vacation where I don't get involved in any decisions. I said that if she wants to go that route, she certainly can, but I'm not paying for it. We have separate finances. Now she thinks I'm being a jerk and should be happy about having a free family trip. Not the idiot. While I see both sides of the coin, what it comes down to is that as you win the trip, you should get to decide how it's used. I would undoubtedly be bummed if my spouse won a trip and then wanted to take it without me, but that's not what's happening here. And I think your wife's insistence on controlling this and her judgment of you for not having the same vision for the trip are really unfair. You aren't a bad person or a bad stepfather for wanting to take an adult trip. Lots of couples do this. It's not cool of her to act like you're crappy just for having another idea. Disagreed here. Everyone's the idiot. It's weird to want to leave the daughter out when you're married to her mom. She's a tween. Mommy's going on a trip to Florida. Like, darn, you're married to this woman, OP. She has a kid who is not an adult. Man up. I'd offer to bring one male friend, and mother-in-law can stay home. But to be honest, I wouldn't want to be the male friend in this situation. Wanting to go on an adults-only trip has nothing to do with manning up, and parents are still human beings deserving of their own time and hobbies. Eleven is plenty old enough to understand the concept of an adults-only trip. She can go another time. Not the idiot. Wifey blab to your stepdaughter to pile on the emotional blackmail to get her way. You won the trip, so you get input on who gets to go.